You wake up in the morning and you want to have a talk show So you film one in your bedroom and you call it a late live internet whenever and wherever you are in the world and welcome to Up Late Live, a talk show filmed right here in my bedroom in the beautiful Mile End of Montreal, Canada. Today is the final episode of season one of Up Late Live, so thank you for tuning in and being with us. It's a special double episode. We have double the guests, double the action, and double the laughs. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, joining me on the show today, we have dancer Karen Fennell. Woo! From Uncalled For, we have Dan Janot. Woo! And musical performances by two lovely ladies, Victoria Laverne. And Deanne Smith. Woo! And of course, with me as always, because she lives here, my housemate, Leia Rondo. Did you eat my bread? My first guest on the show is a teacher, a dancer, and a very lovely lady. Please welcome to the desk, Karen Fennell. <laughs> welcome to the show. Can I offer you some uh, cocoa that I just found? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love cocoa. Cool, you're welcome. You can take that home. That's your gift from Up Late Live. Wow, that's amazing. Just thank your lucky stars. It's not Skeetles. <laughs> Skeetles. Taste the uh, flavor of refracted light. Skeetles. No longer our sponsor. Uh, Karen, you are a, a, a dancer. The first dancer we've had on the show. At least someone that would consider themselves to be a, an official dancer. <laughs> an official dancer. Uh, when, did you, when did you start? Did you start when you were, when you were very little? Um, in a way, yes. Um, when I was a kid, I was, I was a, a competitive gymnast. I spent a lot of my time doing that um, from the time I was five until I was like 15. Did you do any sweet flips? <laughs> I could. Not in this room, probably. Oh. <laughs> I could stand on my head or something. But, um, but uh, most of my dancing as a kid was either just like through gymnastic stuff or like in my basement learning all the moves to Paula Abdul videos. Oh, yes. <laughs> Because it was just two steps forward. And exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did you ever picture one day you would dance with an animated wolf? Um, no. That's probably for the best. <laughs> that, that, was, that was another question. No, um, from someone that comes from a, a, a theatre background, one thing I, I've always struggled with is, is storytelling through movement rather than, than dialogue. Is that, is that something that, that really excites you? Um, well, the crazy thing about contemporary dance is it doesn't even have to tell a story, per cool. se. Um, I guess I would say that's one way in which, I mean, even modern dance kind of broke from ballet and, and, um, and even more so postmodern dance in the 60s and 70s. Um, they kind of rejected all the, um, I guess, I'm losing my words. Um, the sort of uh, norms of, of ballet and modern dance, and one of the things was this sort of idea that it's necessary to have a narrative. Um, so there could for sure be themes and um, ideas behind a piece, but it doesn't necessarily have to tell a story from beginning to end, so right away that kind of frees you in a lot of ways from that constraint. And what, what sort of pulled you in that direction as opposed to more traditional dance like ballet or... Irish dancing? Um, well, I guess, I mean, the way I kind of really got into dance um, when I was like in my late teens, I kind of, you know, I, I, I grew up in a small town in, uh, in Newfoundland, and so I didn't really have any concept of contemporary dance. I thought like dance was, you know, just ballet or jazz or whatever. Um, and so I never really seriously thought that I would go into that because I thought, well, I mean, I didn't do ballet my whole life, so that's not something, you can't really just jump into ballet in as in, yeah. like, in your teenage years, if you haven't been doing that. Um, but then when I sort of got exposed to contemporary dance and the idea that, you know, the, the movement vocabulary is pretty broad and, and it, you know, a lot of other skills which I had were, are valuable in, in that kind of realm. And I guess it's kind of exciting. I feel like contemporary dance is kind of like any kind of contemporary art. Like it's sort of, you know, if you go to see a show at the Contemporary Art Museum, it, it could be anything, really. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I mean, a lot of the work I do involves, involves text, involves, um, voice work, um, sometimes I don't move a lot, sometimes I move the entire time, um, 
So it's it's kind of I find it exciting because there's no real limit as to what you can do, and um, I make my own work sometimes as well, and and yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, it's kind of exciting to not be bound by any particular form, I guess. Yeah, uh, and now you're also a uh, gyrokinesis teacher. Now, of course, I know what that is, <laughs> uh, but course, for those yeah. people uh, watching that might not know what gyrokinesis yeah, is, can you sort of uh, give us a summary of that? Um, <clears throat> gyrokinesis is a, it's a thing that I teach, it's a kind of group class, movement class that's accessible to anyone, you don't have to be a dancer to do it. Excellent. Um, and it's, uh, the, I, I always kind of say it's in the vein of things like yoga or, um, it actually pulls a lot from like qigong and various martial arts, so it's very much about circulating energy through the body and creating like more freedom of movement and just like feeling good in your body. There, there's a website which is gyrotonic.com. There it is on the screen. See how you made that happen? You just made that happen? That was magical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if people want to look up more information. Cool. Uh, um, we're going to play a little game. Okay. This is a little game I like to call Dance Craze Craze, <laughs> where I'm going to name some dance crazes uh, from throughout time, and also some that I just made up. I need you to tell me if it's a real dance craze that happened, or one that I just made up. <laughs> okay. Karen, are you ready to play Dance Craze Craze? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get number one. Let's start easy. Give me a couple of easy ones to get you started. The Hustle. Is that a real dance craze that happened? Yes. Yes, that is correct. The YMCA. <laughs> yes. The Delamont. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, that is a fringe artist. <laughs> the Lean With It, Rock With It. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was a dance <laughs> I'm sorry to say, apparently that's a thing. Uh, the Crank Handle. <laughs> Yes. No, that is not. That's one I, that. I just pictured it in my head. There is there is one that is called the uh, that is called cranking it, but it's not called the crank handle. So you might have got confused. <laughs> um, the meat stick. I think that's just your fantasy. No, it's crazy. It's really bad. Um, banana ramalama ding dong. Yes. No, that is not. That's the name of a sketch comedy show. Um, jerking it. Also, your fantasy. No, that is a real <laughs> dance craze. I'm so, I, these, I don't know where these came from. I don't know why they're dance crazes, but they are. Uh, fizzle, fizzle dance. No. That is a real dance. <laughs> that is yeah, a real okay. dance. <laughs> um, the Spanish flag. Yes. No, that is not. <laughs> um, the stanky leg. No. It is a dance craze. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. This uh, is rude. The Laffy Taffy. No. Is that's great. <laughs> the Scrank. No. No, that is not. That's a horrible thing that I made up. The Nutbush City Limits. No. That is a dance craze! And now, anyone in Australia would have got that one straight away. But apparently, Canada, Tina Turner's uh, big hit, Nutbush City Limits. Not a thing here. Huh. This is not even, this is not Bush City Limits right now on Up Late Live. <laughs> so if you weren't familiar with that before, I'm terribly sorry. And finally, uh, is this a dance craze or not? Oops! Upside your head! <laughs> um... Yes? Yes! It is a dance craze! Uh, thank you so much. Oh! Before we go, before we go, uh, this is a little awkward because uh, I'm not I'm not so good with with this. But uh, it's not very often we have a dancer on the show, <laughs> and I, I like to I like to dance. So <laughs> maybe um, you know if you're up for it, maybe you and I could dance for thirty seconds to nothing while people can overdub the music and make, <laughs> make us dance to anything they want. Okay. <laughs> Coming up right after this. We're going to be dancing for 30 seconds to nothing! Hi everybody, I am Paul Fowler and welcome to Up Late Live, a show where I, I sit alone in a room. <laughs> cheese. Ooh, cheese. Think about my mistakes. So many regrets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to make this moment truly magical, start your music now.
so weird. It's just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> um, it's, it's a talk show um, that I made up from my brain, and it's, it happens in my bedroom in Montreal. And how do you convince all these people to come into your bedroom? Um, <laughs> More specifically, into your bed. The first couple of pitches were hard, because most they were mostly female guests, so it was really hard to say, do you want to come to be on a show that's in my bedroom? It's not weird. It's just gonna it be, is weird, but it's going to be me, me and my friend Paul again. <laughs> <laughs> and you in my bed. So it was a strange thing to pitch, but thankfully people got on board. Our first musical guest on this final episode of Series 1 of Up Late Live is our first returning guest. She was here for Episode 1 and playing us a lovely song on ukulele, Victoria LaBeau!
excited to have this next man joining me at the desk. He's one part of Uncalled For, an award-winning sketch and improv troupe. Please make him welcome to the desk, Dan Janot! Hello Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Can I offer you a very small bottle of Johnny Walker Red Label? Wow, you certainly can. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy that Thanks in moderation. Me. Okay. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, you're part of, please, uh, you're part of uh, Uncalled For, mm -hmm. uh, a very well-known sketch and uh, improv troupe here in Montreal and around Canada. Uh, Uncalled For have been together for over 10 years now. Yeah. How did, how did the group come together initially? Um, Matt Goldberg started a, uh, an improv club at John Iver College. And uh, I knew through knew him through uh, liberal arts. Uh, we did a play together, and he said you should try out for my improv troupe. And um, that's kind of how it formed. It for, formed as like a public uh, improv club at our college. And uh, this is the first time I'd ever done improv. Was was with him. Was actually in his basement, in his oh, parents' yeah. basement. <laughs> that's how most good things start. Yeah, I think so. In Matt Goldberg's parents' basement. And how, how did the uh, how did the troupe evolve from there? Uh, well, we um, we were a larger group at first, and there were a few of us within the group that really hit it off in terms of personality and sense of humor. And, and everyone else was pretty much just dead white. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we dropped that shit. I mean, uh, can I say that? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. It's the internet. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, we just uh, we moved forward both as like a um, a performance group and also like a, a bunch of buddies and. Um, we picked up a couple more people uh, over the years, and uh, now we've been working together for over 12 years, and I think it's mostly because we um, we just uh, like hanging out together, you know? We're like buddies. Yeah. Uh, best friends club. Funsies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, you guys quite uh, recently decided to focus on uh, internet. Uh, internet. Quite a, quite a desk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing piece of technology. Anyway, I'll, just, uh, I'll just put the cardboard back under the leg. I've played live. <laughs> Piece of shit. Um, uh, you guys have been focusing on internet uh, sketches. Yes. Of late. I'm actually gonna. What was what was the motivation behind that? Uh, well, we've been uh, writing sketch comedy for the last five six years, and um, we love doing the live performances. But obviously, you can only reach um, so many people at once, and so we thought. Uh, Maybe a little bit late to the bandwagon, but we thought, you know what? It's the internet. This seems like a good. Uh... The internet. Is, this show sometimes gets up to two hundred views. So <laughs> that's, that's amazing. It's pretty good. That's, that's two hundred people that would not come into your bedroom. It's just watch. my mom watching it. <laughs> and showing it to my dad. And then showing it to my aunts. <laughs> anyway, thanks for tuning in. We're so glad you guys are us today. Um, we're actually going to show a clip of okay. one of the sketches. Do you yeah. want to set up uh, for the people? At yeah, home? yeah, sure. It? So uh, sometimes the stuff that we do is very, um, sometimes it's very silly, but other times it's kind of pseudo cerebral kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, occasionally we do a lot of research on one particular subject to uh, to then try to make something funny out of it. Sure. So uh, we did this one scene. First started on stage, and then we filmed it. And it's all about the um, intricacies of wine tasting. And uh, there's actually a lot of steps and a lot of peculiarities and quirks that go into wine tasting and the people who do wine tasting. So it was like a very well-researched scene, I like to think. And uh, here's a clip from it. Let's take a look. Hello. Oh. Ah! <laughs> yeah. So it's more than just uh, it's more than just dumb gags. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, now that we've shown that uh, wine tasting clip, that actually brings something up. I, I have a gift for you, since oh. it's your um, final uh, episode of the first season of Up Late Live. Yep. And I just wanted to congratulate you for oh, you so all much. of your hard work, so I brought you a nice oh. $8 bottle of wine. Oh, wow, thanks so much. Okay. And it's a, it's a spin top, oh, so... Oh, those are the best cut. We don't even need to go anywhere uh, to, you know... Fantastic, can we... The room. Please, we, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how well it's going to go with the Johnny, but... <laughs> oh, that's a good year. It's good year. <laughs> uh, thank you, this is wonderful. Um, just getting drunk. I mean, <laughs> because we can. Um, a lot of the members of Van Cole for us are spread out uh, yes. through Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Toronto, mm -hmm. and Montreal. How has that sort of affected the dynamic of the, the group? Um, we've really had to work on our projection. <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it's, it's weird because we can't all be in the same room together very often, but we are also learning how to use technology like Skype and yep. um, letter writing. <laughs> have, you, have you guys ever rehearsed via Skype? Uh, we haven't rehearsed, but we've done writing sessions, which are, I suppose, a part of rehearsal. Yep. You know? um, 
it's, it's, it's not easy to do uh, when you're not actually next to the person or in the same room. But I think what it's done is it's just made us more, um, you know, uh, eager to get together, to schedule shows so that we can come together again and, and rehearse physically in the same room. Anders was just here for the last week working on this uh, new show that we're developing. Uh, where, do you, where do you hope uh, this troupe will head to in the future? Um, ideally, we would love to uh, write and star in a television show. I'd That's, watch it. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, you don't know what it's about yet. Wow. Well, as long as it's not racist or anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're gonna have to... So, Dan, uh, you got some... Um, here. <laughs> you got married recently. Yes. Is it nice? It's the best! You know, I was talking about, um, like, uh, on Call For is like my best friends, but really my best friend is my wife. And uh, being married is just like, uh, it's just like playtime with your best friend never ends. They never have to go home because you live together and uh, your parents are watching you most of the time. <laughs> I would hope not. Uh, we're going to be back with more, Dan. Uh, right after this, we're going to get in bed and ask some hard hitting questions. You're watching Up Late Live! <laughs> I was just thinking about kites. Uh, you're watching Up Late Live and I'm in bed with Dan Janotz from Uncall For. Dan, are you ready to answer some hard hitting questions from the people out there in internet land? You know I am. Uh, I've got our studio audience to assemble their favourite questions from throughout the series, so we've got some returning questions here. Okay. But am I, am I answering them about, like, past guests? No, these are, these are just random questions that okay. people have sent in on the internet okay. for anyone. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Alright, Dan Janot, here we go. If you could have one useless superpower, what would it be? Um, just the ability to, like, steal people's sneezes. <laughs> that is useless. <laughs> well, what is your favorite kind of bed sheet? Details, please. My favorite kind of bed sheet is the one that feels like, um, it feels like pajamas. Like oh, flannel. Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, if you could live inside a 2D scroller or video game, which would it be? Oh my god, um, it would be, um, uh, like the pr Prince Legend of Princess Rosella, King's Quest? King's okay. Quest? Can I do that? Sure, okay. absolutely, it's your question. <laughs> yes. What is your most memorable experience with cheese? <laughs> <laughs> there was one time that cheese stole my memories. <laughs> <laughs> Intense. What is your most? What is the most heartbreaking thing anyone has ever said to you? Uh, we're we're passing on you. Oh. oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you could only listen to one track of music for the remainder of your days, what would you choose? Oh, uh, probably um, "Popular" from Wicked. Oh, sure, okay. Not well, a choice, but I support you. Uh, how long does it take for Al LaFrance to eat a ham sandwich without rushing? It was done by the time you finished that sentence. Oh, amazing. Um, if you could shave any famous beard, whose would it be and why? Al LaFrance would eat those burgers. No! Uh, why don't people hug me anymore? Ah, oh, this got good. Uh, what is something you're very judgmental about in your own head, but you think is very unfair or inappropriate to say out loud? Oh, you know, just the way that people will just share really personal details about themselves, like at the drop of a hat, just like out of nowhere. Those, they don't even, you don't, you've never met them before, and they're yeah. just like telling you about like their ex-girlfriend or about their, I don't know. They're deep, really they're deep inside. I'm judgmental about sharing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dan, why can't the chicken cross the road without its motives being questioned? Oh, I think that that's just like uh, uh, latent uh, speciesism. Okay, and finally, uh, when the Spice Girls told you to spice up your life, which spice did you begin to snort uncontrollably for months? <laughs> uh, turmeric, it can extend your life by years and years. Amazing stuff. You're watching the season finale of Up Late Live, and we're going to be right back after this. Stand it up! <laughs> much for being with us throughout this whole season of Up Late Live. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends, zoom it around the internet, show it to your grandma. <laughs> She'll be into it, <laughs> maybe. Our final musical guest for this episode and for this series is another returning guest. We're very excited to have her here. Ladies and gentlemen, D.N. Smith! Hi Shane. Um, I'm excited to be part of your show again. I'm going to do Nerdy Love Song for you. Um, I'm doing it on my computer and I'm aware of the fact the computer is in my glasses. But that's, that's nerdy, right? The reflection of the com I don't know. Anyway, this is called Nerdy Love Song. It is filled with nerdy pickup lines, and I hope that you're going to like it.
Um, there's a kitten down here. This is what I'm dealing with. We'll be fine. Okay, it'll be fine. I want to be your abacus, baby. You can count on me. And I won't say that I love you or I heart you, but I will say less than three. I less than three you. Your molecules must be moving really quickly. Cause girl, you're hot. Are you igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic? All I know is, baby, you rock. You're making it better. And if God existed, I'd thank him for you. But I'm rational, and I read a lot of Sam Harris. You're beautiful like the font of Garamond. But I want to see you sans serif. Take your pants off. I wanna be your abacus, baby. You can count on me. And I observe your quarks oscillating, and I'm formulating a G string theory. Mm. Like an archaeologist, I'm gonna compute your age. I wanna absolutely date you. You make me feel like a male giraffe. I want to nudge your rump, make you urinate, and mate you. Just what they do, scientific facts. The value of my love for you cannot be expressed exactly. It's more rational than pie. Hey. Fuck is a legitimate word in Scrabble. Just FYI. I want to be. <laughs> You're making it so hard. Why don't you tone it down? I wanna be your abacus, baby. You can count on me. And you can suck me into the supermassive black hole at the center of your galaxy. I'm talking vagina. I may not be the biggest or the strongest, but my knowledge of grammar shines. I know how to use the words further and farther correctly every friggin' time farther indicates physical distance and further a depth or degree now you know if you didn't know example the moon is getting farther from the earth about four centimeters annually little factoid take it home with you example just keep getting further into my heart wait hang on you just keep getting farther into my heart. Wait, it sounds, it sounds weird. You just keep getting further into my heart. Wait, what up? You just keep getting farther into my heart. Fuck it. I wanna be your abacus, baby. You can count on me. And if the situation is ambiguous, the further and farther can be used interchangeably. It's a rule, and I knew it. I wanna be your abacus, baby, you can count on me. And I won't say that I love you or I heart you, but I will say I less than three you. Please take off your pants. There it is. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in to Up Late Live and being part of this crazy experiment. Thanks to our guests on this show, Dan Janot, Carol Fennell, Victoria LaBerge, and Dan Smith. Thank you as always to Leia Rondo, Paula Flalo behind the camera there. And thanks to our studio audience. Thanks for watching. I'm Jane Adam Zach. See you next time in my bedroom. Hey. Up Late Live.